pleasure to be here. So 
we, we did two weeks of rehearsal. Uh, Ita uh, was created this safe space so we could talk about breaking ice, <laughs> being awkward, uh, because the thing you couldn't stop laughing. There was some moment when we were rehearsing, trying to find the right shape, choreograph it. It was really funny, and it, we, it really cemented a partnership. And uh, and in my and Jack trusted each other so much. And when we arrived on set, we were so ready to to uh, to, to explore it, and it was felt really natural. Related to that, um, you know, actors when they talk about rehearsing sex scenes. Um, they talk about how it's very technical, it's awkward, but what's, what we always ask, what's, what the audience will always ask for from films like this is chemistry, and there's such wonderful chemistry between Emma and Jack. Could you talk a little bit more about um, how you either work with the actors or what were you looking for from them uh, from specific scenes? So you can't really predict chemistry. <laughs> we were very lucky because uh, obviously, it, it was um, it was it was the best, and Emma was first uh, casted, and then I had a feeling that Jack and Emma would get along. But I had no idea that it would really, you know, you can have two actors who hate each other, and then you have to still create and pretend this chemistry, and that's the hardest. So what we were extremely lucky is that Emma and Jack not only had a natural friendship and great sense of humor. Um, and they had this natural uh, camaraderie and uh, and trust and and yeah that's that was like that because you can reverse all the, you know all you want but at least when you have that it's uh, it's such a great love again it makes the work going even further. Um, Issa, uh, what a beautiful composition uh, and score. Thank you. Thank you. You know, we, we, based on what Laura talked about, the themes of the film and the emotions um, in terms of sexuality, sensuality, could you talk a little bit about uh, the, the, the discussion the two of you had in terms of what the score should look like and what your input was and what were you trying to achieve for the various beautiful shades of emotions of love and romance in this film? Um. I think that one of the first things we talked about was the sex scenes and the idea of uh, not scoring them because actually they were so powerful that they didn't need any help from me. Um, and it was funny because Law um, and I started working together um, from the rushes, so like when you make a movie, um, this was all new to me, you, uh, you get sent dailies, right? And um, Laura was like, I need Issa to see the dailies, and I was like, oh, this feels super like special. So I was like watching the scene, and then Laura would make up, and then me again, and like, then she would assemble these like sequences. So that would be like my first approach, would be like, um, seeing a sequence cut together and then how I, I would do it and then <laughs> I would send these really extra like epic pieces of sweet and score with loads of horns and drums and Laura would be like yeah that's really good but like can, can you keep just send me more and then it, about halfway through the process I sent her a bunch of music and she out the most simple, intimate thing that was basically like three chords. And she was like, this is it. And I was like, okay. She's like, give me loads of variations of this thing that's like three chords. And I was like, um, and, and that's how we unlocked what it was supposed to be. I think also, like, Laura shot the movie in a very intimate and elegant way. So, um, you know, my natural instinct to make it like, like war <laughs> was not needed, and um, and it was really beautiful to kind of like explore what would be a very simple, some simple stuff, and it's some of it to me I still want to change. <laughs> it's still like, can we just tweak a couple of things? You were rehearsing backstage, and you were with your hands right now too. So. <laughs> um, I'd love to
want to open it up to the audience for some questions. Questions about the strong contrast in emotions and musical cues for those. I think actually a lot of it is it's instinct. And like, you know, like you look at what you're seeing on the screen and the action of Connie or the frustration that she's feeling or like the isolated or like the fact that she's taking control of the situation. So it's like, hmm, maybe. Like there is the score to tell the story and the score to talk about her, and that was the difference. And uh, and we kind of always approached it as a very immersive way, something that could twist and evaluate all the time when you talk about her. And Ola also has some electric music and <laughs> instrument that yeah, was important just to translate some emotions that uh, would be coming from her and her, from her transformation. And the score from the story is we kept the roots of the classicism, and uh, and and from there there's two different movements. It's, it's probably the contrast comes from that. She expressed how much she loved the, 
the, the scene when the dead snake came under the rain. And she said, this is what I really want to explore myself at Emma to this idea of ecstatic freedom, uh, where there's no limits. And, uh, and we had the same meal. We wanted to be this, this use and this, uh, you know, this uh, explosive energy. about, I uh, just said that working with the cinematographer and the choices there. Um, so, we, there's a technique of the 20s, autochrome, which we, we wanted to, to, um, to explore and to modernize. So it's, uh, Benoit works with diffusing lights and with some filters, uh, just to give this idea of a, of a modern autochrome. So we had like the palette of green and blue and purple. Um, and we were really inspired by like he, he brought the reference of this another photographer, Anne Brignan, and she was photographing naked women in, in the forest, in the nature, and it was incredible the composition, the light. So that was like a great, great inspiration for us. And also some erotic drawings from uh, Edward Schiller um, and Rodin. Benoit is a cinematographer, is a painter. So he was bringing a lot of uh, um, uh, ideas, uh, fictional ideas that I would have never bring myself. And he, he yes, there is something that he felt was uh, too, he was very inspired by this, 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 this decade. And, um, and then he, we wanted to leave all this feel of like restlessness for her. And outside, we were all like, we didn't really anticipate the hand out, and it was like, this is definitely what we're gonna do, what we're going to do. Hand out and always like following her loosely, her movement to just give like this visceral uh, feel. Um, and, and inside the house is very rigid and restricted and claustrophobic, so to really isolate her as much as possible. That was kind of like the basic approach, and then from there, we magic sometimes happen or not, or I see it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, you had a question there? Please give one more round of applause.